Well, Heather's coming for a visit this week, which means I'm trying to kind of tidy some things up. Certainly don't want to start any new projects right now. But there's one thing I'm learning is there's a suspicious lack of rugs on a boat for you to sweep all of your stuff under. We spent decades chasing the American dream, only to realize that working more to have more wasn't exactly the dream we expected to be living. Together, we walked away from it all to rediscover what's really necessary to live a rewarding life. Inspired by other YouTubers, we bought a fixer-upper sailboat in the hopes of discovering the world anew. Just as soon as we learned to sail. It's mattress making day here on Garuda. I'm starting this process by laying out some Duraskrim uh, pattern material. I'm using a couple of just uh, one and two pound scuba weights to kind of mark where I need things to go. Uh, we're going to have one little issue here in the corner where the pattern doesn't quite reach. I think I can kind of figure that out, but uh, I want to make sure the length is correct, so I'm uh, sticking with this way. Here is the pattern material cut and put into place. So I'm going to have one issue in that corner where the pattern didn't quite make it. Everything else seems to be fitting just fine. So what I'm going with natural latex. This one happens to be from Sleep On Latex. I'm using two different mattress toppers. One is a three inch medium firm thickness and the second is a three inch firm firm thickness. So I chose a natural latex for a number of reasons, but I should say up front, one of them was not price. The number one reason is that this latex is all natural. It comes from rubber trees in Sri Lanka. So the second reason that I went with the natural latex is that it is more durable. Uh, it has to live in a pretty harsh environment being in a boat, and so durability is something that's important to us. But the third, and arguably the main reason that I bought it is for comfort. So this one happens to be perforated. The holes in it allow for better heat distribution so it doesn't get hot at night. Um, it's also better with moisture retention and other things. Combining two layers allows me to customize the comfort level to best fit us and our needs in the V-Birth. So next we put the pattern on the mattress. Perfect. So this is the fabric material for the top of the V-Birth mattress. And what I'm doing here is laying out the cut from my pattern. And also marking my seam for when it will be sewn to the side panels. This material will be the back of the mattress. It's a perforated material to allow for breathability. And these are going to be the side panels. Well, we got too sweaty to sew yesterday, so I'm picking it up again this morning. I'm going to try to knock this out before it gets very hot. So um, what I'm doing is I'm putting a zipper in the back panel uh, in order to allow the cushion to come in. I'm using some basting tape uh, on my zipper uh, because, frankly, it, it's still early and I'm having coffee, and this helps me hold everything. So hopefully this is a little forgiving for me this morning. Okay, so sewing a box panel now on the edge in order to enclose the mattress. So with the box done, we're going to sew the uh, top cover onto the seam of the box. Ok, 
Okay, so all sewn. Now I've uh, unzipped the back and we're just turning this inside out. Make sure that our corners look good. Before we take it to the mattress and put it on. Let's give it a try. Here's a quick look. Got to kind of crawl up there and fit it a little better, but you get an idea of kind of what the V-Birth mattress now looks like. Well, we're up early. Going to get Heather from the airport. It's going to be our first time seeing the boat since we bought it. We'll see what her reaction is. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Looks good. I can live here. <laughs> it's homey. Okay. Feels like home. Good. So I'm in from North Carolina and this is my first time actually getting to see the boat since we, we bought it. Uh, the first time I saw the boat, we did not own it. We, uh, I believe at that time we'd put, we had had an offer put in, it had been accepted, but um, it wasn't our stuff, it wasn't our boat. And uh, so this is my first time actually seeing the boat, staying on the boat, seeing everything that Herb is, has been working on on the boat and uh, actually sleeping on the boat. So we've been going to restaurants, we've been um, reading, we've been hanging out in the marina. The other night we did a movie night uh, with uh, folks in the marina. Um, we've done some shopping. We're gonna go down to uh, Key West where uh, there are no boat projects and there's also no laptops um, for us. So um, I won't be working, he won't be working, but we will try to catch some good footage um, of what we do. Um, we may not catch it all, but uh, it's, uh, it's good to actually um, get away for a bit together. We actually spent some, some time down in Key West. We, we got engaged in Key West about 11 years ago. So it'll be nice to hopefully visit some of the places that we we went to back then and see if they're still there and uh, see what it's like. We're also hopeful that it won't be too too crowded because I think it's supposed to rain and um, I think that um, some of the things are canceled. I think there was supposed to be a festival this week that's canceled. So that's good for us because we also want to you know stay social distanced and uh, hopefully still be able to experience Key West. Located closer to Cuba than to Miami, Key West is Florida's irreverent southernmost location. It was discovered by Ponce de Leon and claimed by Spain in 1513. But throughout its history, the deep water port of Key West has attracted pirates such as Blackbeard and Jean Lafitte, which also brought the U.S. Navy. And eventually, wrecking and salvage became the principal occupation here. In a lot of ways, that culture continues to this day. Palm gardens, colorful conch houses, cigar and rum makers, famous writers and musicians, Key West inspires the dreamer in all of us. County Courthouse was originally built in 1823. It features a 100 foot tall clock tower, which can be observed from almost any part of Key West. Monroe County, by the way, covers not only Key West, but all of the Florida Keys and even part of Everglades National Park.
waiting on the tour. And there's a big line. Built in 1890 as quarters for naval officers, President Harry S. Truman used this facility as a vacation home and a functioning White House between 1946 and 1952. It's considered the birthplace of the U.S. Department of Defense, the U.S. Air Force, and the CIA. Presidents Taft, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Carter, and Clinton have all used this facility, and it remains an active presidential retreat. So we're filming this because they don't let us film inside, so these are our impressions uh, coming out of the deal. It's still a security place, so. It was like stepping back into time. It, uh, at moments, it felt like I was in my grandparents' old house, <laughs> but it was um, very interesting. Yes, it is a little bit about uh, like visiting your grandmother's house, but I think what's cool is uh, like it just it captures a moment of time uh, or in time with the furniture and the famous you know headline of uh, Dewey beats Truman, but also just thinking through all the things that took place there. The the idea that the president traveled by yacht uh, as opposed to Air Force One. Um, that this was the birthplace of, uh, you know, the CIA, the Air Force, the Department of Defense, um, and that it, then it, the fact that it had been used even more recently seems a little crazy to me because it, it feels like a museum a little bit of the place. But it's just, uh, it's definitely one of those places where if the walls could speak, I'm sure there's some great stories, you know. Um, and poker games. And poker games. We're back at a restaurant we came to about 10 years ago. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> to really lean in. <laughs> so the museums, unfortunately, are not very photo friendly or YouTube friendly because we can't like film anything. <laughs> Uh, Mel, Mel Fisher treasure. treasure, which is pretty cool actually. The whole search for the Atocha is very cool. Yeah, but it was good to see all the other stuff too, like the pirates and um, there was a, a slave ship that was interesting to learn about. Right. Uh, but the treasure was very interesting. So now we've returned to what we do best, eat. This is really close to my first car ever. I really, really like it. I think it's very, um, it's perfect for us. It is the right size. It is, it, it can't be any smaller, but it, it doesn't need to be any bigger. So I feel like um, we picked the right boat and it's very, it's very comfortable. It's cozy. It still needs a little, it still needs a toilet, <laughs> so um, the bed is very comfortable. I don't feel like I have a lot of issues uh, with the rolling, but we are in a marina and I have not really had too much trouble sleeping, but it does take some getting used to for me. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, it's been perfect. Hundred thousand. Took nineteen years on my old Jeep. Did a hundred thousand miles. Somewhere. Where are we? Boca Chica. Yep. <laughs> Not really celebrating. Woo! <laughs> I know the day is coming when I'll sell my old Jeep and buy a dinghy for Garuda. I have to say that one of the things I enjoy most is the Wrangler wave. It's a sign of courtesy and respect practiced by all members of the Jeep Nation, and I'm gonna miss it.
I hope you enjoyed watching this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did, give us a like. It really does help us out. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing. It is free after all. And if you click on the bell, you'll even get notified when we post something new. Hope to see you again soon.